Uh, thank you all for your generally positive comments on uh, the new uh, Investment and Financing Act of 2009. Uh, hopefully this is a beginning, and certainly, you know, while we'd like to do more, we are constrained like uh, many businesses in terms of how much money we can actually spend at any given point in time. So a lot of your suggestions, I think, fall on very receptive ears, and uh, hopefully going forward, and as uh, Lord willing, our economy recovers, uh, we'll be able to make some additional investments. I uh, was interested a little bit in, uh, uh, Mr. Shea, your comments about the real estate uh, portion of uh, what SBA is doing and how that we may be overemphasizing that on one hand and maybe the interest, market, rates, market uh, interest rates might be more important. Can you elaborate on that a little? And then I'd like Ms. Finch's response to that, if that's okay. Sure. And, and I don't want to... I didn't don't want to pick any fights with anybody, but uh, one of the things that, uh, that we think would make sense to put the uh, emphasis where it ought to be in terms of the 7A program uh, would be to look at the uh, amortization periods and say, for example, for uh, a loan that's going to amortize over a period of 15 years or longer, um, that there ought to be borrower fees associated with that. And for uh, a loan that's going to amortize over a period of 15 years or less, I guess it can't be 15 years or more, but, you know, split the difference, uh, for the shorter uh, term amortizing loans, um, that we ought to reduce lender fees for those. I mean, the, the goal ought to be to create incentives for the money to go to the places that are really going to help uh, startup businesses as opposed to a longer term amortization. And a small business is not a 30 year amortization or an 18 year amortization. A small business is a startup that you need an injection of capital for 18 months or 12 months or two years or something like that. And uh, so, w whatever we can do uh, to sort of reset some of those things uh, that would emphasize or create incentives for the capital to flow to uh, the startup side, from our perspective, that makes sense. Now, obviously, other people have other perspectives for totally legitimate reasons, but that's our view of one way in which you might do that. Um, in terms of the uh, market rate on the interest charges, uh, and I'm not sure if you were alluding to that as well. I, I, I mentioned that, and it's in my, uh, our written submission. Um, in that area, clearly, from what everyone here has said, I think um, the demand for access to capital uh, exceeds the current supply, or, or if not the supply, and I think maybe it doesn't exceed the supply because we know that balance sheets look pretty healthy at a lot of places, uh, but it, it exceeds willingness to lend. And so the question is not so much how we create more supply, the question is how we create incentives to lend. And incentives to lend back to the, the observation that um, capital is agnostic. I mean, capital will go where it's going to achieve the greatest return on investment. And so if there are lenders out there that look at opportunities to make loans and say, if it's an SBA loan, I can earn six and a quarter, and if it's a loan somewhere else, I can earn eight or nine percent, then they're not going to do an SBA loan. Um, and we can't blame them for that. So our view would be uh, if there's an opportunity to strike more of a balance there between the interests of lenders and borrowers, recognizing this is a government agency. And you've, got, you've got some borrowers that are actually lending at 8%, eh? Uh, uh, I don't have many in my area, but I uh, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think in some places it happens, and, and you know, uh, Ryan talked about that, still better than a credit card. So, I mean, if you're really desperate for capital and you've got a great idea, you'll pay whatever you have to pay. And uh, I think a lot of lenders don't want to do deals at 6% if they can do a better deal somewhere else. Ms. Finch, comment? When the American Recovery Act was passed and the, um, the money was available to pay fees uh, under our program, it, it did increase our loan activity. It was a real incentive for businesses who maybe stepped back and were thinking twice about expansion, um, saw this as an incentive of, well, maybe this is a good time to expand because I can have the savings on, on the upfront, free, upfront fees. So they would go ahead and do their expansion. I feel that's money well spent. Um, as, as I stated in my testimony, though, beginning October 1, our subsidy ra rate went from zero to 389. Um, I think that increase in fees is going to eat away at small businesses' cash flow that if they were to apply for a 504 loan, if that fee were to be paid for, and that would be a savings to them, that that would be also another incentive for them to use the SBA 504 program. So I think there's, there's ways to use money smartly um, and, and, and more effectively, more cost effectively 
to help give an incentive to small businesses to use our types of programs. One thing I will also mention is under 504, if you are a small business startup, you are required to put in 15.